An eight-year-old boy told his mother he had been sexually assaulted by another child. It happened, he said, inside a group home where the boy was living in foster care. After her pleas for more information were ignored, that changed after WBTV's chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner started asking questions. I felt helpless. I felt that I could not be there for him like I wanted to be there for him. Um, my heart just dropped. This Cleveland County mother is talking about the moment her son told her he'd been sexually assaulted. Right. We're taking steps to protect her identity so she can share the sensitive story her son told her. We was having a visit at Cleveland County DSS and um, he disclosed that um, the boy was making him play games to prove he was not gay. And then we asked him what kind of games and he just, you know, just dropped his head and I said, well, you need to talk to somebody. The boy is eight years old. When he disclosed being sexually assaulted in early December of last year, he'd been living at this group home for foster children called Christine's home. He was placed there by DSS. He come back out and had said that, um, that there was another boy doing sexual things to my son. The Cleveland County Sheriff confirmed a juvenile was charged as a result of her son's report. But state law makes any information other than this police report secret. I just felt helpless. I just felt like I couldn't do nothing for him that I wanted to do. So your son's been in DSS custody. Yeah. He was taken from you to yeah. keep him safe. Yeah. Do you think he was protected? No. He wasn't molested in my home. He wasn't messed with in my home. No, he was not kept safe. At all. This mother lost custody of her son three years ago after drug charges. But since then, she says, she's gotten clean and turned her life around. In fact, the boy had been living with his mother in violation of a custody order until DSS found out last fall. That's when he was put in the group home. They took them from previous stuff that happened three years ago. You know, I've changed my life around. I work every day. They took them out of a safe, took him out of a safe home and put him somewhere where what's happened to him is going to affect him the rest of his life. She knows firsthand the lasting impact. This mom says she and her brother and sister were in foster care as children, where she says both of her siblings were also abused. It still affects my sister. It still affects my brother. Um, to this day, and we're all grown. After hearing about this case, we wanted to know what is being done to regulate group homes in North Carolina. Facilities like Christine's home are regulated by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Inspection records show the facility is only inspected once every two years. The last time Christine's home was inspected, was in 2020. A DHHS spokeswoman says that the agency makes calls and other visits in between the every two year licensing period, but there are no records to support that. We asked, did DHHS even know that a child reported being sexually abused at Christine's home before we asked? They wouldn't tell us. State regulators say they don't release information about children being abused in group foster homes keeping the public in the dark when abuse is reported. And the director of Cleveland County Social Services did not answer our question about what her agency does to supervise Christine's home when it places children there. And she didn't answer repeated questions as to whether the agency still has children in Christine's home. We sent multiple requests for comment to the company that owns Christine's home, but never heard back. Do you think any adults bear responsibility for what I do, I do. I do. I think the home bears responsibility or whoever was on duty um, because the 12 year old was not in the home but for two weeks. Two weeks. And this happened within two weeks. And no one knew about it until he told you? No. And no one would have known about it? No. Reporting is Shelby, Nick Oxner, WBTV, on your side. Children in our area are being taken from their homes by DSS social workers without ever going before a judge, and it is not supposed to happen like that. A WBTV investigation has uncovered major flaws in the system, first in Cleveland County and now in Gaston.
Now, while state regulators stepped in to stop the practice in Cleveland County, Chief Investigative Reporter Nick Oxner found out neither the county nor state regulators at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services will even acknowledge the practice in Gaston County. Normally, a social worker has to go to court and get an order to take a child from their parents. But it hasn't always happened in Cleveland and Gaston County. This is the document used in Cleveland County. It's called a temporary guardianship form, and it's illegal. It was used until last summer, when the county DSS director reported use of the form to regulators at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. By signing the form, parents agree to let DSS put their kids with someone else that they choose. Now, if you say no and assert your rights, go ahead. Then we're going to go to court and we're going to push to place this child with total strangers. Richard Wexler runs a nonprofit that advocates for improvement in the foster care system. He reviewed the documents we uncovered in Cleveland County. It's important to recognize this is absolutely not necessary in any way to keep children safe. As workers with the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services continued to investigate what was happening in Cleveland County, they found a similar form being used in Gaston County, too. Take a look at this email from a DHHS supervisor where she says they found a, quote, similar type form in Gaston County. That supervisor followed up with this email to say that form was, quote, definitely the same situation in Gaston County. But take a look at this email from a DHHS spokeswoman who says that form the supervisor found was not related to guardianship or custody at all. But there's a problem with that. Here's the form that's used in Gaston County. It's used for parents to sign over custody of their children temporarily to someone else. And here's a second form that the supervisor found Gaston County was using to close out those cases when the parent signed away decision-making of their children to someone else. The problem is there's absolutely no oversight to that. Anastasia Cowan is a lawyer who handles DSS cases across the region. She says she's seen forms similar to what we found in Gaston County but have never seen them used with the second form that transfers decision-making away from parents. There's not a judge on there. It's just I hereby authorize so-and-so to get medical attention for my kid, and there's no date on There's no end date. There's no nothing. A spokesman for Gaston County refused to answer our questions on camera, but in an email said the county's use of the forms had been approved by the state. That raises a red flag to me because under what process has it been approved by the state and who in the state is looking into this and why is it okay for that to take place as opposed to going through the formal route of having a seven-day hearing, having an adjudication, permanent plan, all those hearings. From the documents that you've reviewed, does someone need to look into what's going on in Gaston County DSS? Absolutely. A spokeswoman for NCDHHS refused for weeks to schedule an on-camera interview so we could ask questions about why state regulators did nothing despite the concerns of its supervisors on the ground. So we caught up with NCDHHS Secretary Cody Kinsley before he spoke at a public board meeting one morning in Asheville. Your office is now denying that Gaston County is using temporary guardianship forms, even though your own staff says they are. Your office is withholding records about it, and they won't agree to answer our questions. Why is that? Uh, you know, I'm happy to look into this and to, to follow up, but I think it's really important to know that we have incredibly uh, strict privacy requirements around children. And so we're not talking about specific children. We're talking about the use of forms that take children out of their homes of their parents without a judge's order. Your staff at DHHS knows this is happening and hasn't taken steps to address it in some counties in the state. And so we've been trying to get an interview to ask why that is. DHHS is also withholding records. Why are you why are you impeding transparency into this matter? I think that's an incredibly inaccurate uh, characterization of what's happening. You've denied our records. Yeah, request and you won't answer our questions. Thank, Thank you, you so can, much. You what, sir, why won't you schedule a time for an interview? 
Now, we know that Cleveland County found 11 cases where children had been taken from their parents without a judge's order in just a two-year period. We don't know how many families were impacted in Gaston County. All of those cases remain secret. Now, coming up on On Your Side tonight, I'll take a look at one other county in North Carolina where this was found to have happened a few years ago, and we'll look at the consequences still unfolding for that county. Children living apart and away from their family, all after social workers used illegal forms to remove children from their parents' custody. I messed to DSS, give me my grandkids back because y'all went it by the wrong way. It's a practice WBTV has been investigating for months after state regulators raised concerns in Cleveland and Gaston counties. The similar forms being used in Cherokee County even led to criminal charges for DSS workers there. And now Chief Investigative Reporter Nick Oxner has found illegal forms being used in yet another county. Nick is pressing a top county leader on how these forms were used in the first place. What would you tell your grandkids? I love them. I love and miss him every day. It's been more than a month since Joyce Banks has seen her grandkids. It's tough. Yeah, it is. And the only thing they say, they want to come home. The two kids, a boy and a girl, ages 10 and 6, were taken from their parents this spring after both were arrested. First, they were living with Joyce until she was hospitalized. Then they stayed with their aunt. Now they're separated, living in foster care. Do you think anyone was acting in the best interest of those children? No. I really don't. I could be wrong, but that's just the way I feel. Did they fail these children? Yes. In a way, yes. Yes. They did. Gloria Banks is the aunt they lived with for about six months last year, from April to August. Social workers didn't go to court to get a judge's order placing them in Banks's home. They used this form, called a temporary guardianship agreement, to place them in her care. He told me that I had to print the paperwork off online. I went and did. I did the, everything that he told me to do. You never went to court? No. I never even got in front of the judge. I never spoke to a judge. I never spoke to an attorney. None of that. When you looked at these forms that have been used in Cabarrus County, what was your first reaction? Astonishment. Oversight of a child and their placement is, is not a commodity like a car. North Carolina State Representative Marsha Morey spent nearly two decades as a district court judge in Durham, presiding over cases including emergency child custody. You can't do informal agreements. Uh, you have to follow the law. In your experience as a judge and with your knowledge as a legislator, is there any world in which a form like this could be legal to use? Absolutely not. These forms are not to be used in our agency. Karen Calhoun is director of Cabarrus County Human Services. She says her agency took immediate steps to correct the cases, like the bank's children, where illegal forms were used to remove them from their parents. We, uh, as, as soon as I was notified, we quickly made a decision that all three families would be contacted. And they were contacted by phone call by our administration and had a conversation. But there's no record of anything else happening. Social workers never got the required court order. A lawyer for Cabarrus County DHS said the agency notified the state after the use of illegal forms was discovered. But a spokeswoman for the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services says the first time they heard about this case was when we asked about it. Then there's this email sent on April 5th where the child welfare supervisor reminded employees they cannot use temporary guardianship forms, saying there had been, quote, several incidents in which that had happened recently. Read that again. The email says several incidents. But Calhoun had a different story in our interview, Perhaps. claiming that email was prompted by one request from a different county to use an illegal form. And it was one incident, and so, you know, if, if it sounds like there was more than one incident, uh, you know, I can't explain that. It's these are the words of your employee, your program administrator, that makes it sound like this form had been found to be used more than once recently. How does that score with what you're telling me now? Poor choice of words, perhaps, but it was an isolated incident. 
Now, Calhoun says the cases where these illegal forms were used were fixed by the use of a different process called a temporary safety placement. But Maury, the former judge turned state lawmaker, says that process is illegal too. I have more on that, Jamie, when I join you at 7.30 and on your side tonight. Looking forward to this conversation because it's an ongoing issue. Clearly, you keep finding it in several yes. counties now. And you just think about the kids. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Thank you.